And uh, today's demo day. So uh, whatever you've got uh, uh, at this point, play it. And uh, let's see, Kluke, I lost all my progress early on in the semester too. Swift, I have two versions of my game now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that's a good idea. Okay, so let's start at the top of the alphabet with Mr. Apon. So fire away, Donato. Oh, wait, I got to set it so you can share screen. Okay, you should have permission. Go ahead. Okay. Play your game for us. Right. Actually, play it. So, um, yeah, let's just start it, I guess. I don't really have any introduction. I I changed a couple of things and fixed a couple of bugs, but um, nothing crazy major has changed. Um, you press play. I did not make a how to play yet, so I'll probably be explaining that. But um, as the game goes, is that you can select the room. The map is randomized. If I wanted to, I can actually just randomize it right now. Um, I did fix a bug that made it so there was invisible nodes, so I do not have that mystery room element. Um, it was a smaller thing, but um, yeah, I'll just start selecting a room like this. Um, as you can see, the fight starts. I don't know if you guys can hear audio, but there is music that goes along with it. Um, there's no like uh, attack sound effects, but the there's a speed bar here on the right and that lets you determine when the character can go. Um, you have a basic attack and then abilities, which use your ability bar here. So if I wanted to, I can use an ability on this guy and it used four points that he had. Um, and it's just a simple like deal damage. Um, some abilities instead um, buff characters or heal them um, or debuff a character. So for example, the small guy Horus here, he can use his ability to cheap strike, which oh, I didn't target the right thing. Hold on. For some reason, I guess I'm having issues. Hold on. I think it's because of the targeting system got messed up. Uh, there's, there's a couple of bugs there like that, but um, certain characters have certain abilities. So if I wanted to heal my own character with Kepri here, I can use Lesser Heal um, and he got healed up. You have your armor, which reduces the amount of damage you can take. Um, so if I take five damage, if Kepri takes five damage, then instead he'll only take two. Um, and certain characters interact with the armor system some more, like they can temporarily increase it. Um, things like that. You also gain ability points when you do a basic attack. So I was at two. Kepri gains, I think, uh, four points whenever he does a basic attack, but his basic attack is very weak. Um, whereas something like uh, Horus, he doesn't gain many, but he's got a very fast and consistent attack. Um, and that's that's pretty much the basic system. Uh, there's another fight I'll just, I can quickly go through. Um, but it's going to be pretty much the same thing. It's randomized what I can get. Um, this is a bug I have not been able to fix, which is the default name appearing. I just haven't had a lot of time. But it doesn't physically change anything in the game or gameplay-wise. But it's just annoying because uh, it makes the UI look messy and ugly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the game, there's not too much with the, it comes to special abilities that I haven't explained. Uh, there is the... Arcto's ability, which lets you buff up someone's armor temporarily. So as you can see, he's now has seven armor, Horus. I gave it to him. So for one attack, he'll like take no damage with it, or he'll take like whatever it is. Um, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. There is a couple other scenes that I'll try to show off. Uh, but as you can see, the zombie, there's only one of them. In the last fight, there was like two guys. It's randomized one through three, um, so you can get any amount of those. And there's, there's I think, three different minor enemies you can encounter during a fight. Um, but right here, the campfire, I did not set it up so you can see the, your health bars of the characters, which is a nice thing I want to add in, because this part right here is very important, because you don't know who to heal. But essentially, I can pick one character to fully heal here. Um, I think... It kept re lost some health, but I'll just pick a random one because I wasn't paying attention. But that's a nice thing I want to add in eventually. It's just like little health bars just so you know, like, oh, that's probably more important to heal that character. Um, these things are like the major fights. So uh, they're 
not essentially like they're not full-on boss fights but they can be pretty tough i only have two different kinds of characters that you can get from this um there's a ghost and there's like a snake guy um they're just slightly tougher than average there's only one enemy you're gonna fight though in them so it's not like you're gonna get three snake guys at once or anything like that um i think this character has a a, heal, a self-healing ability. I haven't been able to test it completely, but he might be able to heal himself. That's another thing I do want to add, though, is actually uh, making it so then the you can see the enemy's health bar. Um, if I that's probably like my next big thing, to be honest. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. It looks like I think I think it did bug out because of his self-healing ability. That is one thing I never got to test. So. I will just pause the game real quick and I'll be able to skip this fight because there's a bit of an error with that, unfortunately. Um, but if I wanted to, I can show off actually really quickly here while I'm here at the screen. Um, oh no, I can't because then I'd actually have to uh, leave this map, but I can regenerate a map if I want. If I wanted to uh, make this a brand new thing, I can easily just switch it. What's cool is that it actually does save your progress between play sessions too. Um, and I think that's really neat. So. Yeah, Say if I, I yeah, I, I don't really know how to perfectly make it so that it actually goes back to this one because technically it was at this fight, but instead it just skips it uh, when you're middle of the fight, which is not, <laughs> that's not great for gameplay reasons. Uh, someone could easily just cheat the system and get to the end, but that's no fun. Uh, so I have another heal here. I just pick a random character because again, I, I don't remember what their health values were. Um, and there's one of three <laughs> uh, random fights this guy was the one that got here uh and it's just this is the boss this is the big boss yeah, this is yeah. one of the big bosses uh, and, i actually and... have had some errors with him unfortunately he was supposed to have two phases where he turns into the giant snake and it doesn't seem like it actually works i think it just will go to the end of the game and i really wish i had time to like really work on it it's just been really oh, you've got all summer yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping I can like work on it this summer and just add these little things and eventually maybe add like whole new mechanics. Like I wanted to add uh, a shop. I had a lot of work on that um, and a couple other things. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, they, they target randomly the enemies. I don't have anything specific with them. Uh, they It seems like they're pretty picking on this Horus character I have right now, which is not great because he's actually the weakest. And he's usually what I found out is a good strategy. He's actually just keep focusing on keeping him alive because he attacks the fastest. Um, so you want to use him as your damage output. And then the other guys to almost either support him with healing or to like increase his uh, armor and so on. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the game. I can... If I kill him, then I get to go to a win screen, which will bring me to, uh, hopefully it should bring me to the main menu if there has been any other bugs. But I've been, I've been noticing every now and then there's little bugs and stuff like that. Uh, but that's pretty much the game. That's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of stuff and it makes a lot of errors like this. For some reason, it looks like no one can attack right now. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, I think that has to do with the second transition of the fight. I think if I pause the game right now, I can actually show you how the main pieces of this. But if I look at him into his health bar, he actually is at zero health. But because it thinks that he's supposed to be transforming, there's a lot of uh, errors. <laughs> so there's, there's still some bugs and stuff to figure out but if, if you ever get the bugs all out of it um uh the the webgl publisher mm -hmm. which is a download package from the package manager has a, a a button that you press publish and it compiles your game for webgl it uploads it to the unity servers and it puts it on your page and it then has a URL link that you can give to people and they can play your game on the web. But of course, it's got to be pretty much bug free before you. Yeah, can do that. I, I don't want to upload this for you have characters that just can't do anything. Um, but yeah. the only other but scenes that no one it, got that's the goal. That's the right. goal, right? Is to get yeah. it sufficiently bug free that you can compile a WebGL version of this and publish it. And right. that's very cool. Uh, okay. Any any questions, comments, suggestions for uh, uh, Donato? 
There's a death screen if you're curious. <laughs> uh, Danelle, just from low here. Now, your abilities, is that just like you you can choose from that and then attack is whatever you chose beforehand? Or um, is it close uh so the abilities themselves are like essentially boot like different kinds of attacks the the standard attack button is just a basic like flat damage if i actually i could show you right here um so let me move this camera so i can actually see uh so this is the basic attack it's just a flat value of like damage and it doesn't cost you any ability points whereas these ones, like I have this one, is is just more damage, and it costs a six ability points. Um, but this one is a buff. It gives them five, uh, a value of five, which in this case would be affecting their armor, so it would increase it by five, and it costs them three points to do that. Um, and I have a couple other things I actually never got to working on. Like I wanted to make an AOE attack, but I never got to doing that. And there would there would be one for targeting friendlies and enemies. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So th this is where the manager steps in and says, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Publish it. We have a publishing deadline. We, we, you know, the manager steps in and says, no, you can't add any more features. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 wrap it up. So, yeah. Okay, great. Any other questions, comments, suggestions for Donato? And share your I screen. A, oh, I have a ahead. question. Um, hey, Dorothy, go ahead. Um, what happens if one of the characters dies so when they die they actually get saved as dead um their fight their health will be at zero i have it saving all their stuff here you can bring them back with the rest site i haven't made it like too punishing for that because sometimes you can get really unlucky with what kind of fights you add uh, i got pretty lucky where it was only like two enemy that one enemy and the path i chose was not too difficult but like sometimes you might get a randomized map that's like there's three enemies in a row. The fight, the rest site's not till like near the end. Um, so the they'll just be gone until you want to heal them at the rest site if you choose them. That is cool. Great. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Okay, unshare your screen and um, uh, Abby, you're up. I think. Yes, Abby. Um, so I'm definitely behind where I wanted to be at this time. Um, but I did a lot of just like boring background work this week. So between that and the fact that I don't really have much else to do for the next week, I'm, I think I'm ready to cruise on it, but we'll walk around where I am. I did work on the train a bit. Um, so I have this plugged in my phone right now. So I'm turning my phone and stuff. Um, I'm like facing like so much away from my computer cause I did not position myself right. But anyway, um, there'll be like a little clue on this rock um because I, I still need to hide those everywhere where to find the final location um do, do, do. Just walking over here for a minute i still need to work out the bug of um so i found i kept the camera from falling to the ground but it still falls down when we're on slopes which we'll see in a second but um and all these cliffs they're going to be um like more rocky terrain but again i wanted to get the hype map figured out before i start adding textures but we got still oh uh oh. Hold <laughs> on. It's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Anyways, this... Ah. Did we get back up? I don't know. There's going to be a clue on that tree. Um, so there's kind of like a little nook over here. I'm really bad at controlling this while trying to talk. Also, just bad to control to begin with. Okay. Yeah, we fell on our back. That, that's as far as we're going to get. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I haven't, I honestly just haven't been trying super hard with that this week. I messed with it a little bit, but, um, Again, I wanted to work on the terrain first. But um, I, did you see the comments I made on about the demo version that you handed in? Yes. Um, and did that I help? I, I can't tell how the phone's going to work, but uh, I forget what. There was some little thing that I did to the gyro thing so that it. No, you messed with the joystick, and the joystick works now. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not a problem with that anymore. And the, and the gyroscope is good too. It's, yeah, let me move the Zoom stuff out of the way so I can. Um, where am I at? Yeah, the way I kept it from falling to the ground, because it used to just like drop the camera to the ground, is I just gave this box collider a height. But now the box just falls over when I'm on slopes. 
Um, so I need to approach it a different way. So it's kind of like a, a band aid for one problem I was having, but um, yeah. And I remember you also gave some feedback last week about stuff to try and I just haven't gotten around to that yet. It, uh, it, it, it's maybe late to do this, but if you do a character controller version character, they stay upright. Yeah, and that might be something I, I do try and I'm like, I'm probably am gonna mess with that. But then that also, the joystick is really meant to work with a rigid body. So I, okay. last time I tried to do it, I worked, I found some issues trying to combine tutorials and whatnot, but I want it to work, so I'll come back to it. Oh, I think it was, uh, I set your rigid body to is kinetic and it didn't fall over then. It's still navigated, but it didn't fall over if the rigid body is set to is kinetic. Yes, but then the camera just fell straight to the ground. Oh, okay. Um, it oh. just had it had other issues. So yes, I did fix one of them, and I think I still have it as is. Uh, I guess I got that changed. I don't know. I'll see if that does anything. But I just remember that it fixed some problems and and made problems. others. <laughs> yeah, progress though. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any comments, questions, suggestions, and have you been able to compile this for your phone? Um. I, again, I still haven't tried. Okay. Oh, hey, we're not falling, but we're also not going back to the ground. We're floating. So again, <laughs> one problem caused another. <laughs> okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Abby and uh, wrestling with phones? No, uh, Mr. Campbell, are you ready to do something? Campbell? Uh, yes. So, tower defense game, not that much to show off. It's a pretty standard tower defense game, but at least we can go into it a little bit. Um, I, did, I did add a couple of things since uh, last time I showed anything. Uh, again, you start the, the first round with being able to buy every tower. So usually I just buy a whole bunch of machine gun towers because they're always good to work with. Um, and each one of these towers, you can also set a target you can choose nearest to goal nearest or strongest weakest pretty standard stuff for um most tower defense games you can upgrade them you can sell them uh one interesting tower is if you only have access to a few towers on any given round say that you don't have any uh machine gun towers available and you need to buy some more towers you can buy a resource tower which generates money over time and once it's generated enough money you can also upgrade it into a real tower I'm not going to oh. do that right now because I don't need it. But um, at the start, you also start with three perk points, which I can use to purchase any of these. I upgraded, I right, upped the cost a little bit because um, I found that if they all cost only one star, then it was a little bit too strong. So, like, this makes it a 25% chance for a machine gun tower to crit. Uh, this one just increases damage to laser towers. And this one, I really like it uh, as a 25% chance to basically mini stun. Uh, any of the enemies if you have a cannon tower. So if I put down a cannon tower, which is, I don't remember what it, look, what it looks like. Here it is. Done a couple of those and then by that perk, we can see it actually happening. Very cool. Oh, I love it. Uh, you can speed up the game to double speed. And <laughs> yeah, uh, it's that's, really a, that's a good addition. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, there is no one. One part of the challenge of it is that there's no way to actually uh, like pause and put down towers in between waves. It'll just spawn automatically after five or six seconds. Um, so you just want to slow it down if you do need to do some some restructuring. So like I can't stop it from spawning. Um, so as soon as you start the start the map, basically it's going to be nonstop action until you lose, uh, because it will. It, there's no actual uh, wave cap; it'll just go on forever. So if I let all these guys go through, eventually uh, I will end up losing. There are some perks that make it easier to go on uh, a little bit longer. Um, I can't actually access it right now, but this heart one right here will increase the the life regen per round. So when you win a round, you'll gain like one one heart back or however much it is based on how many perks you bought and of course you can also buy unlimited towers up here if you have enough perks i didn't add a tooltip to that which 
you know, is a little confusing, but it does cost 20 perk stars, and then you can have all towers available at all times. Uh, some other things you can buy are little abilities like this. So it just like drops a, it uses energy up here uh, and it drops whatever, a critical buff. So like all the towers in the area uh, get a chance to crit for a certain amount of time, or it's just like a little bomb that you can drop on the track to kill a couple of the enemies that are getting close to the end. Uh, and of course you also have normal mines and proximity mines uh, and blockers as well, uh, which I haven't actually messed around that much with. Uh, I didn't put in the blocker myself. This one was included, so I didn't have to do much of that tower. This is but, great. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, of course, there is the restart button if you ever want a new map. Um, and that's it. There's no, there's no uh, you win screen. There's just nonstop shooting at <laughs> enemy tanks. Until you die. Yeah. So uh, again, have you tried publishing this? I have not looked into it, no. Okay, so on the package manager, down at the bottom of the Unity assets is uh, a WebGL publisher. And you add that package, and there's then a pull-down menu from the top that says publish, and you press the button, and it all magically compiles and uploads to the Unity server and makes a web page that you can play your game on. And, and you can give that URL to anyone and they can go and play your game. So, you know, it's, it's worth giving it a try. If you've got a relatively bug-free game that you're happy with, publish it right. and send me a link so I can play it I or I can publish it. I, I, I'd love to be able to get these, on, on these games online someplace, but I haven't forced that. So any comments, questions, suggestions for Mr. Campbell? I had a quick question just to know upon what was the blocker's uh, ability? I imagine it would just stay in the way. Would it just like stay there in the way permanently or would it go away over time? Uh, so the enemy tanks can actually attack it. So there's a there's a amount of health that it has and then eventually it will be destroyed. Gotcha. War war never changes. Just like real life. You guys are fun. And actually, as I was uh, explaining that real quick, I went to put down a blocker and I realized that I have my uh, my colliders inverted. So you can only place it off the track and not on the track. So <laughs> it's not terribly useful at the moment. But that's a good fix. <laughs> that's, a, that's something to fix. Yeah. OK, cool. Any any other comments, questions, suggestions? Very cool. That That's great, Spencer. All right. Um, Carter, Mr. Carter, Devin, go ahead. Yep. Give me a moment. I gotta figure out the share screen button again. Oh, there it is. We're good. <laughs> okay, so no one's gonna have to worry about feeling like uh, they didn't get a fully playable thing uh, or a game working because I basically just have a tech demo, and that, that's that's about it. Um, I can just do a brief showcase of the things that are indeed working. Um, might remember once upon a time uh, I couldn't get uh, vision working. They they do they do see me these days. Um, they're still not really signaling to each other but individually they do do things and eventually if i just run away and go behind a wall if i don't spin my mouse like an animal um yeah they get bored you can see it in the debug log and they just go back to what they're supposed to be doing which is standing on those circles um and then i can regain their attention if i want to i can also just shoot them if i if i'm feeling like a terrible person if i get my mouse on the screen there we go he's sad now um don't worry about the error that's actually an intentional error i have a debug, <laughs> I have a debug log to see no, no, i i use them all the time i know exactly what you mean I, as it turns out i have too many debugs so i needed a different color of debug i can actually showcase uh where it is it's just this one right here because i'm trying to make sure i can damage the player uh and heal because i had them before but i never tested them that it does you can see the ui changes and then eventually he'll start healing back up very slowly. The second thing's for armor, but I have no armor pickups currently working. So I have no way of showcasing the armor. And you uh, have I'm lots of weapons, right? Yep, I do have lots of weapons. I also have, you can see there's a magazine, it depletes. Uh, the bullets are slow mostly, so I can see them. I'll probably <laughs> start speeding them up, but I need to make sure they were working. And it's kind of hard when they're moving really fast. 
Uh, I, I have no I like slow enemies. bullets. You can see them. You, you know, it, 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 and it it gives. I like slow bullets. Um, a reload works again. No animation, but it works. Uh, in case anyone's curious, it is intentional that it overflows the magazine and you waste a bunch of ammo because I'm not doing the normal video game logic of somehow you magically move all of the bullets out of a magazine into your reserve as you're doing the animation. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing the weird game physics. I'm just doing it just how it probably would work, <laughs> work if we, we took that away. Um, I do have the other guns. I have a handgun. As um can see, the crosshair does change. I uh, got that working. Although, as I found out, PNGs don't count as images. They count as sprites. Um, that confused me for about maybe three hours. Um, currently, they, they do about the same thing with some different stats. And they, they don't come out of the muzzle. They come out of somewhere else. Yeah, so I basically, I have it placed in a way that... Um, it's a little iffy on some of the guns. Like it, it looks a lot better with this one. I need to move them around. It comes out of a little spawn spawn point that is a part of the container for uh, every rifle or a weapon. You can see there's there's layers over here. Um, and the other part of that is like it, they they're currently pulled up because that was just the suggestion you gave. And there is a bullet pool right here. All my my bullets are pre spawned. Yeah. Um, and they move back in as needed. Um, but the the way the bullets work is I they also have a raycast, so they come out from that point and they raycast to wherever my cursor actually is, and they figure out the direction from there that they're yeah. actually supposed to be moving. Cool. Uh, but yeah, I need to move it for these other ones because of the the empties are not in the right places. <laughs> um because it's lots, individual. Lots of fiddling. Yeah. Lots of fiddling. Okay, well, cool. So your AIs are working in your weapon system. Uh, you've got multiple weapons, and that's very cool. And yeah, um, one you know, one minor suggestion uh, with AIs, and if if that's the main thrust of your of, of your topic, uh, one of the things we do is is uh, provide some visual indication of what state the uh, AI is in. You know, is it is it patrolling? Is it chasing? Is it uh, attacking? And you, you you know you can do this with a little color hat you put on the on the AI that changes colors as their state changes. Uh, and so this then becomes less of a first-person shooter fighting game and more of one of a demo of AI's abilities. And yeah, well, one of the things I'm trying to get to, because um, now that everything is working and I fixed a million different bugs that were just breaking my everything, uh, granted, I still don't have lighting because I couldn't get it working. Um, is it, are those all raycasts that it's... Yeah, so this was the original raycast method because when I swapped it to a different method of just firing out um, like a sort of collider, I, I was having issues where like I wasn't overly pleased with like say if the uh, AI was just clipping right this corner, um, like it, if I was just firing out a standard collision, um, it would basically stop at this. But in, theoretically, they could see like through the edge of this corner, like uh -huh. over in this direction. So uh -huh. I changed it back to this once I realized why this original method wasn't working, uh, which was simply. Uh, it was facing the wrong way. Okay. How come you didn't just use an angle kind of thing? You know, the, you've got your forward direction and you've got kind of a range of sight that you can see. And so you cast, you've got your forward direction and the direction to the player. And like just seeing if there's like firing a single ray cast to the player at and just seeing if there's anything in between yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, to answer that question, I didn't think about that till now. <laughs> okay. Well, that that would be a lot cheaper than all these raycasts. Raycasts are expensive, as yeah. you probably know. I, I, I tried to swap off of them. I couldn't figure out a good method. Uh, 
that 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 makes sense <laughs> it, it's very easy you've got your forward direction and you've got your direction to the target and you've got a ray cast that goes out to the target and if there's nothing between you and the target and you're with and the ang there's a vector three dot angle that tells you the angle between two vectors and if that angle is less than your your range of vision you know the angle that you can see then then you can see it and and uh, and it doesn't require a zillion right casts it just requires one to see if there's anything between you i i don't know i'm i mean i've seen i saw bracky do some kind of multiple Raycast thing where he was raycasting in every direction and he had a geodesic of sphere around his object that had it was crazy but uh yeah that, that sounds amazing and i want to find where, where that was cause... i think it was black <laughs> uh, I, I i've been trying to like do some of well most of the stuff without too much tutorial influence and it's uh resulted in a lot of spaghetti code yeah um okay. that needs desperate refactoring once the summer hits okay all right any comments questions suggestions for mr carter all right devin turn off your share screen and uh, mr kluke you're up uh hello all right i'll share screen here and okay all right, so I haven't gotten a whole lot of progress. Um, mostly just been trying to fix up bugs. And um, uh, just like Devin, I have a lot of spaghetti code. <laughs> uh, that's mostly just because I've <laughs> kind of been trying to put everything into one single script, which is the auto generate script, this one. Um, it basically does pretty much everything for the train generation, except place like the trees, if that makes sense. Um, and the reason for that is if everything is in separate object placer scripts, it would sometimes place objects like in the air before the train completely finish, finishes generating, yeah. which is a real, real pain. So I've, I've uh, basically put everything into this auto generate script, which makes it a little bit so complicated one, and hard to read. One way to deal with that is if you, if you had these separate scripts that, that did the different tasks uh, and you wanted to order them, you would have the first one making the terrain and then setting a bool on the second script that's going to drop the trees and the the tree dropping script is sitting in a spinning loop waiting for that bool to be true at which point it then drops the trees and sets the bool for the grass script to go ahead and do it i don't know if this would be any more efficient than having everything all in one but yeah that's that's part part of the reason why i was, I was thinking about it is that um it's it might be slightly faster if everything is in one script it's just not it's not particularly easy, easy to follow i guess um yeah but yeah it's, it's definitely something if, i'd, I'd if, look into if, if you come up compartmentalize things uh so that you know you have a a main start function that that says build all my terrain and it that calls the function that builds all the terrain and then you have place all the trees and that you know i mean you can organize a single program to be like a bunch of individual ones by yeah. compartmentalizing yeah. things yeah okay cool yep and then um yes yeah, so basically i've gotten a lot of the uh i guess like the core functionality of the of the game done um at least when it comes to like terrain generation, I have nice grass, patches of grass here. Um, it does look great. You, you, rocks, you, trees. Yep. Um, textures. I have lots and lots of nice textures, like cliff texture. Uh, basically, this is all using the terrain toolkit, um, which is a very, very useful thing to use. Um, it made a lot of the terrain generation uh, much easier than I was originally anticipating. Um, one problem that you can probably see in the um, console down here is that for some reason during play mode if i have the terrain toolkit script open if i start like just trying to access it you can see the number increasing there yeah um i i think it has something to do with the ui if it's, it's not <laughs> as far as i can tell it's nothing that it's nothing on my end it, it might this is my guess it has something to do with the terrain toolkit 
GUI. Um, yeah, and but I'm honestly you, not really sure. You, does that script have to be enabled during the creation? Um, I don't think so. Well, I, I mean, because you can always want if it, if you need it to be active during the creation, when you're done creating, you could enable script uh, terrain tool could enable dot equal false and just oh, okay. turn it off. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know you could do that. That's a good idea. OK, very cool. Any comments, questions, suggestions for the procedural terrain using the terrain toolkit API, which is a tour de force of uh, procedural terrains? Uh, I have a quick question again. This is now Apon. Um, and I guess this kind of goes for any of the randomly terrain, uh, terrain stuff. Is it with the way you set it up, could you easily change it so it's no longer like instead of grass, it's like a I don't know, different biome, like sand or snow. Like, is that possible? Because that could be really cool. Uh, yes. So basically, um, if I just, I'm going to probably actually show you this if I can access the, how do I make this thing go away? Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to, no, how does it? When the play button's underneath the. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Um, anyway, yeah, so basically I'll just describe it. So basically I have a, a list of uh, textures um, and depending on which order they're in, uh, it'll generate it at different levels. Um, so you can see down there, uh, there's sand that's generating near the water. I could put any texture in there. So it could be like, it could be lava. I could put, you know, <laughs> uh, make it like magma or something like that, or make, you know, snow, which I have up on the top of the mountains over there. Um, yeah, so basically it's, it's very flexible. I can put pretty much any texture I want in there. Are you seeding the random number generator? Um, uh, no. OK. Uh, anytime we're working with like random things, uh, uh, it's nice to be able to have it do the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. as you're testing it. And if you seed the random number generator, which is just a little call someplace to, to, to set the seed, then it will always be the same sequence of random events that yeah and so you'll get the same terrain so you can kind of work out the bugs and then later you can turn that off so it actually makes random terrain or you can change the seed uh, to see that things are still working when it's a different configuration and and then ultimately you can remove that so that it is truly random Any comments, questions, suggestions? That's really good. Uh, I, I know from my own experience how uh, difficult it is to work with the Terrain Toolkit API. There are a lot of fiddly little things. All of the function calls have like 15 different arguments that you have to set and, you know, lots of decisions to be made. Any, yeah. any comments, questions, suggestions? Okay, uh, David, I, you're up. Uh, you, you can describe your. <laughs> your sure, yeah, yeah, I, I can say a couple things. Anybody uh, ever read read the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? I have not. Okay, so it, it's an old book from the '70s, but it it's about a about you know keeping old machines alive. And uh, this guy, you know, rides his motorcycle around and it's always breaking down on him and he has to fix it by the side of the road. And he, he coined the term gumption trap. And the gumption trap is when you're taking some machine apart and there's a screw. And instead of getting the screw out, you drop it into the gear case. And so you now have a screw down in amongst the gears that if you actually ride your bike anymore is going to chew up the gears and ruin everything. And so there you are by the side of the road with a screw down in your gear box that you have to figure out how to get out. And that's a gumption trap. And David, you've got a gumption trap going here, as I understand. So poetic as it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 
I think one of the funny things I forgot to mention was uh, I actually, my cousin has some experience with game design. And when I asked him, I said, Hey, you have anything, you know, do you know how to solve this problem? And he told me, yeah, upgrade to unreal engine five. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 a, that's a possibility. Yep. For a game that I wanted to show off of, uh, Unreal doesn't do 2D as well as as Unity though. Uh, the okay. Unreal Engine is more 3D, and and it doesn't have some of the 2D capabilities that Unity has. But yeah, go ahead. And uh, yeah, so uh, one of the things obviously I wanted to show off was the actual conversations. That was what was going to be the main part of the game. And for me, not not to show you guys, kind of disappointed on myself, but. Uh, I, I did want to let you know my final report. I'm gonna throw in the entire script, and I advise you all to read it because if nothing else, it's gonna make you laugh. It might read like a 15 year old girl's fan fiction, but it is funny. So just go on and read that. Uh, and outside of that, it was just. I mean, I know I showed like a couple of weeks ago and how it was a colorful world and walking around, but yeah, that that was basically it. That's where I wanted to be, but I I guess. Part of part of being part of this is you gotta be prepared for problems. <laughs> I think I've learned my lesson to have a backup at this point. Yeah, and you've got a week to fix things too. So right, it's not the end of the world. Okay, any any comments, questions, suggestions for David and his broken game? Nope. Okay, uh, Mr. Hallett, you're up. Uh, Hallett. Yep. Yep. It will. There you are. Um, okay, so I've got I've got a um a pretty good demo. Um, a couple of things aren't working, but I'll go over it, and then I'll go over um I don't know some of the code stuff. Um, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna be sure my screen. Okay. Um, okay, so basically this is, um, this is, that's music, if you guys can hear it. Um, and then this is, so basically you just input a cellular automata rule. And essentially it could be any eight digits, um, but it's really, it's supposed to be just like any eight um, sequences of uh, ones and zeros, as opposed to um, one, two, three, four. And then it displays, yeah, so I, I used um, the voxel sphere and basically I took the, the 2D cellular automata grid on the left and I just um, set it up in a, a three-dimensional array um, and it basically just creates a cube and then once you have the cube you can do what what was in that voxel um, sphere tutorial which is basically like calculate the distance from the center cube or the, the center of the, the the parent object to the um, uh, a certain distance like a radius uh, a distance of a radius, and then you can just not instantiate anything that's outside that radius. Um, so then you uh, you eventually get this um, this sphere. Now the idea is to basically go from that page back to here, and then be able to um, add a different rule. But there's something going on in like the in the way that data is getting passed between the two, where I can't get. Um, it, it, the second time you press this this button, it doesn't actually set a new cellular automata rule. And I've spent a, a bunch of time trying to figure that out. And I just, um, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's not it's not working properly. Yeah. Um, so one one yeah. suggestion immediately: tell your user what they're supposed to do with this little window here. That they're supposed to put in eight digits that are zero through one, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. No, this is more of like a only I know how to play this game right now. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but just to show it off, like, let's see. Um,
Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it's sick because you can explore all the different things, and then also um, I spent some time trying to implement the gravity stuff that you keep talking about, um, Professor. And um, I, I can't really get the actual character controller to work, but. So if if and when you do eventually get your character to walk around on this sphere, yeah, uh, don't don't use the cubes as the colliders. Just make a sphere collider that is the same size as that thing, and have your character walk around on a plain Jane sphere collider. Because your character would never walk around appropriately on those cubes, uh, and and so don't have the don't have cube colliders. Have a single sphere collider that matches that shape, and your yeah. character can walk around on it. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I, I was thinking about that, but it's like. Um... Okay. Very cool. Any cool. comments, okay. questions, suggestions? Thanks. I, it, um, I, I'll, I'll show you in a minute here what he's doing. Uh, and what that rule means, and we'll see that in a little while. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Will? Instead of doing, like I understand uh, doing the sphere collider, that would make things way easier, but couldn't you also just make um, make the step of the character controller, like the step height greater than like what, whatever the cubes are? Yeah, I, I don't think mm. it, it, this gravel, gravity sphere character is a rigid body i think and oh that's a custom yeah it's a custom oh. thing it's not this and and the character controller didn't work in spherical gravity because the character controller always wants to be upright z right. uh, upright y in the world and so that yeah that that Makes was sense. an issue but yeah I, I i think the easiest thing is a sphere collider Let's see. My grandfather dropped a battery nut in his motorcycle over Easter. We shook it and then found the magnet wand. Yeah, that's the that's the ticket. <laughs> okay. Any any other comments, questions, suggestions? That's I was just going to have a comment and just say that I think the music choice was very nice. It was very relaxing and it felt like it would go with that type of game. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. Thanks. Absolutely. Cool. Thank a, you. a little bit of sound engineering goes a long way in making an immersive world. Uh, you know, like we we focus on the visuals, but uh, sound engineering is a whole area of Unity, and uh, there's a very powerful tool for doing all kinds of fancy stuff. It's a, basically a mixer board that you can use to control from scripting your different sounds. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? If not, Dorothy, you're up. Sure. These are great so far. By, and by I think so. Once the last time, I have to click share sound to um, get the game music um, going. I think if you if you do original sound on, it might. If there's a little button up in the left hand corner, original sound. I think that's where you. I don't know. I, I, well, I did the share sound, so we'll see how that works. Okay. Um, I don't have a crazy amount different than last week. I got a lot of progress on. Um, it's always really loud. Sound works. Okay, well that's good. I turned it down though because it was loud. Um, I got a lot of work on the equipment, uh, equipping things. And I got it to a point where I have a lot of progress on it, but it's not breaking anything what? currently. Um, so that's good, um, but it's not real quick. Really you might want to turn it down a little lower. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, um, can you, is this better? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is still the, the same menu doing the lovely customization, however you may want, you know, randomize. Um, and you come into this scene. I did make a background that you can actually walk around in. Oh, pretty. It's fun. Um, and I have like blocks, so, like I can't go into the, the pond on my own and stuff like that. Um, that's what I have mostly. You can pick things up still and everything. Um, 
Is there anything to pick up to wear? Not yet. So I have, yet. I'm trying to set up the uh, this little menu over here so that you can actually put things on. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of things like in the process of working, yeah. but not fully there yet. Um, and then I chose when I was working on this most recently, uh, I should probably have an actual scene that you can walk around in instead of just a blue pack screen. Um, so yeah. That's kind of, and then I had to learn the whole like making a grid because yeah. uh, each of these are just little um, squares. So that was fun, but that's pretty much where I'm at right now. It's great. I like it. <laughs> and 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 uh, that comment about the sound uh, that you made for Mr. Hallett, I would agree that you've picked some really nice cartoony sounds. Or... I got lucky with the sound. All the other sounds I was looking up were not great at all. And then there's just this one there. They have a bunch of them. And it was so I was very happy. OK, very <laughs> how, cool. How, how I got it. Stridecast Audio Miru, way to go. Any comments, questions, suggestions for uh, Ms. Harris and her uh, duck? I have a quick suggestion. I don't know if it's on right now, but it sounded like the music didn't loop afterwards. Um, it could have been because you stopped your game, but you can make it loop if you, I don't know where your audio source is, but there should be just a little box. I don't know if that's checked off or not, um, but that's what I would suggest. So it just keeps going so the music doesn't randomly stop once it runs out of time. Yeah, I'll look into that. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've played ever long enough to check if that loops. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be part of the issue. It's an easy fix. I think it's on the audio source. OK, great. Um, any other comments, questions, suggestions? Mr. Harzuski, you're, you're up. Matt. All right. Yeah, I'm sharing on here. OK. So I mean, I've shared most of this off incrementally in the past, um, but so I've got the terrain generator is all squared away pretty much. Everything seems to work fine now. And it performs better than uh, Sebastian Legg's original one because I keep threading up. Populator that shows scenery objects is done. Um, and so yeah, like when I run it, I get the... Uh, Full infinite world. Um, I haven't like I never really really decided whether I liked the uh, water shader or not. I, I like the style of it, but I think it'd be probably better if I like change the textures of the land to be the same kind of low detail art style because they're kind of like a little more photorealistic on the terrain side than the water. But. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. overall, I got Otter One working too. So I can just push one key and it'll keep going forever so you don't have to hold the button down. Because <laughs> it gets tiring walking across an infinite terrain, right? Yeah. And when you're testing things, you want to make sure that it actually does work, you know, on a long, <laughs> over a wide area. It's a nice quality of life feature there. You get that in things like Minecraft or. MMO RPGs or whatever too usually have an auto run key, so it made sense to add. I never ended up like getting around to uh, adding like trying to get the uh, enemies and stuff working. Like I was like on the listing they wanted to add, but um, I had like kind of like started looking into it, but it's kind of ran out of steam near the end with capstone stuff. But overall, I'm happy with this progress anyway it's, yeah it's uh, great you know i i mean the, the i'm really impressed with the two procedural terrains that we've got in this year's class because they they took completely different approaches to it one that you know this whole thing and and the addition here of the infinite terrain which i don't think you could do with the terrain toolkit but um it's great I'm I'm 
uh, totally impressed. And I, I think the water looks fine. Yeah. Any comments, questions, suggestions for, do you have an airplane scene? No, I don't. Um, I, I thought your demo that you handed in had an airplane. I didn't have an airplane, but I did like, at one point I made some minor modifications to the code and had the player controllers fly stupidly fast through it, test the performance. Um, but I don't think I handed that in. I just like did like a quick uh, demo. Cause that's a, that's a real stress test when you have your player flying at 300 yeah. miles per hour. At, at the time it worked pretty well. So yeah. the, the demo you handed in, I think had it, it seems to me anyway. Um, looks great. Any comments, questions, suggestions? And, you know, don't worry too much about gameplay with enemies because that's not the advanced topic that you yeah. actually signed up for. Yeah. I'm more interested in the and doing the thing anyway than making a game. <laughs> definitely in your in your write up. Describe what it was that made yours faster than Sebastian's, you know, so that somebody trying to follow it, could follow it. All right, so uh, Mr. Howe, are you here? Oh, yeah. So, can you hear me? Yes, oh, okay. we can hear you. Uh, All right. right. So, I've been having just a lot of issues, but um, I can show what I have. So, I've been in the past week, or yeah, week. Whatever you do, on. don't press that button that makes an infinite. Yeah. Sorry. So I've just, it's been spawning infinite worlds. I've had a second work on it this morning, but I haven't really gotten anything substantial. Um, I have made it so it shouldn't crash right now if I hit the button, but you know what? It For Zoom purposes, so I don't crash the entire Zoom call, I won't do it. Yeah. But I, because I, <laughs> that just doesn't sound good, but I can show you my island prefabs that I've made. Um, I really like this texture kit that I found online that I bought. Um, uh, what else? So I got that island. It has these fun little animations on it. Um, here, that's another one I made. And these all have spawn points on them for enemies to spawn randomly. Um, along with, yeah. And then I, they also, I've been going through. So these spawn points on here are those, these are where the islands are supposed to spawn onto. I've been following a video tutorial. It's not going well. And currently it's not the destroying collider. It's supposed to destroy the islands when they collide with another and make it so they stop spawning islands and it sets spawn to, true, uh, to false in the code. It's not working right now. I think it might have to do with the placement of the spawn points, but I'm not 100% sure. I've just been very frustrated with it, but yeah. So I, th I think the the issue with the infinite spawn is someplace in the template script, okay, which is instantiating a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, I I haven't I haven't looked at it in detail, but I did find that if I deleted that from the uh, the, the that script, I, it wasn't enough to just turn it off. You had to actually physically delete it. Oh, I did. Okay. And uh, from from the inspector, uh, yeah, the uh, prefab. But uh, then I, I, I then I could walk your character around the world and shoot arrows and the pirates and everything chased me appropriately. Although there were some issues with the gun tip. Yeah. I, being, but uh, but it, you know that mechanics worked. And what I would say about this. Uh, I, I'd kind of revisit the spawning thing and, uh, you know, maybe do it with prefabs and then just spawn them on a checkerboard. Yeah. Uh, and I assume they're going to be connected somehow, but. Um, yeah. I just, it's a work in progress. And I, I honestly really do want to continue working on this through the summer because I'm not happy with what I've gotten done, but I'm really hoping for the final submitted draft that can get something working a little yeah. better. At this point, concentrate on getting one island, working with all the shooting mechanics and uh, 
and enemy health and shooting and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll, and deal with the spawning later because that that is crashing the computer. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Any any com uh, anything more? Go ahead. I'm not cutting you nope. off. Nope, I'm good. I'm okay. Nope. It's a work in progress, and there's a whole nother week yet to go. So it, it ain't the end of the world yet. Peter, you're up with your with your cars, which I played with, and they're great. Go ahead. Great. Uh, thank you, Professor. Um, yeah, so I actually got all my other cars set up. Let me share my screen. Uh, racing. Cool. So um, you guys can see I have all my other cars set up. Um, here's the sports car. Here is the SUV and excuse me, uh, that was the race car. And here's a sports car. Um, and then the garbage truck I'm having some issues with. Um, the, <laughs> That's too bad. I wanted to play the garbage truck. Yeah, I'm super excited about the garbage truck. The So the sports cars I have in the SUV and the race car all came with, if I open up their um, packages and I go into the mesh, they came with a collider mesh and um, a transform mesh. And the garbage truck, only comes with a transform mesh. So I'm trying to create a collider mesh because the um, scripting I'm using for the physics only can be used with um, mesh colliders. So I'm trying to create a mesh collider for the garbage truck. That's taking a little bit. And then um, I am- I, I think planes are, I think a plane is a mesh collider. I will have to check that out. But yeah. let me go and play my game for you guys real quick. Um, so if I go ahead and play, um, here's the main menu, has everything, it has the help button, um, audio, you can do all that stuff and then exit obviously works, but we wanna continue playing the game because it's fun. So we hit play and um, I've been limping my way around with trying to get a script going for um, being able to select a map and then the car and then set the car and the map active um, once the user is fine with that. But for right now, we'll just stick with the grassy map. It's the only one working. And then uh, we'll go with the 3000 GT and oh, it's not active. So that still doesn't really work, but it, what would happen is you would <laughs> go to grassy road and then the sports car would be set active. And then you would play and then you would be able to drive. And um, eventually, hopefully there will be a UI in the top left that tells you your time. Um, and yeah, this car really moves right now. Uh, also, it's a little slippery, but. <laughs> it's uh, great. And the speedometer, the needle doesn't move. Yeah, I'm working on that too. There's a lot of problems right now, unfortunately. So, it's like one thing at a time. So, so with with the the different cars and the different scenes and wanting to be able to have different cars active in in different scenes, the, the approach you've taken where you've got all the things in the scene and you turn one of them on that you want to have active, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just to have four grassy scenes, one with the red car, one with oh, the okay. race car, one with the SUV, and one with the uh, with the garbage truck. And, okay. and the menu system then gets a little simpler because when you press, uh, you know, car in the grassy scene, it, and you, you know, you end up having lots and lots of scenes but you don't have to fiddle with the issue of turning on and off different players. Of course, yeah. the way you've done it is fine, but the other way is kind of a cheap and dirty hack that yeah. uh, that, that might simplify things. Because uh, I found that the 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 menu scene didn't work as well. But you know, this is yeah. Yeah, this is my script I have for it now. Like I said, I mean it's. It's a little embarrassing for a fourth year in computer science, but you know, it, it, uh, it, yeah. But this is video so, games. This is video uh, games. You don't have to be embarrassed. It's uh, I, you know, I just set the map. Every map is associated uh, with an integer value, and then um, once you get to that, so then the map gets set, 
And then once you get to the sports car screen, then each uh, button is associated with one of these like void functions. Um, and it'll, it'll load the, load the map. I think yeah. depending on if this is, uh, you know, how, how it reads through the code, if it's interpreted or compiled, I don't know if this will run, but to set the game object to equal to true. So I'm still playing around with it and yeah, I might just do what you said. That seems, uh, intuitive. I think, I think it'd be, it might be game object dot enabled equal true. I I'm, I'm not sure you Nope. That's not it. Game object transform was, enabled. I thought it was game object value equals uh, true. I, that didn't. Oh, work it, it might be set active. Maybe uh, I don't have. Uh, I don't know. It, it, you, you'll have to fiddle. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, That's what I got. But the, the, the other easy way to do it is just to have 16 different scenes. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, right. four to four grassies, one with each car, and, you know, figure out how to index access them through their index right yep okay uh, well I, I we still want to see the garbage truck um look at the i think the plane comes with a mesh collider okay and, and you could basically build a box of planes around your garbage truck it wouldn't have to fit that well but you, you know it'd be a, a if that's what your tool insists on. So, right. uh, so we look forward to seeing that for the final version. And of course, uh, if this could play on the web, that'd be really, really, really cool. Yeah, I would be excited about it. So, okay. um, it's web G WebGL publisher, and, and you just press a button and the magic happens. Yes, no, that would be that would be fantastic. Um, I couldn't see. Did you leave comments for me on Brightspace? I am having a hard time seeing if you did. I clicked on the demo draft and then hit read feedback, and it didn't look like there was anything attached. Yeah, it does. No, there were. I, you know, this the demo. The demo thing was a binary. Something was handed in. Nothing was handed in. And okay. you got you got a hundred if you handed something in, even if it didn't work. Uh, okay. I, this was this was a purely binary. I didn't grade things, and unless there was something really compelling, and yours it was working, so it's fine. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't uh, put much effort into grading these. I just said yes or no, and the yes or no was something was handed in. So, okay, cool. Okay, we'll we'll be more particular when it comes to the final game, but. Uh, all right, so any comments, questions, suggestions? Let's see, 22 new messages, God. Uh, lowercase game object refers to the object the script is on. Good, good point, Elijah. I, I didn't notice the case there as he was doing it. If that was a capital game object, then that obviously yeah, doesn't work. It was, I just, set active does work um okay. okay so i'll keep that in mind thank you yeah. okay any any comments questions suggestions all right um uh, roshan are you here there you are hello um so i think the last time i gave an update i i couldn't get xcode to work um so since then i've learned that my computer has a corrupted hard drive so that was really fun for me. And it's like some error that doesn't, it's not able to get fixed with Apple's like hard drive first aid. So I don't know. You, don't you, know you're saying that. it's a mechanical problem in the computer that? Yeah. Oh, what a bummer. So anyway, I was able to get Xcode working by deleting like half of my hard drive and then deleting Xcode and then updating Xcode, but it that was a week. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I do have a, a working version on my phone, but I'm not going to make you guys look at that because that's not fun. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use Unity to kind of demo what I got, and then I'll show you where haptics are supposed to be, and sometimes they're there on Xcode. So. 
and go through the how to play first. And it's just like the basic overview for purpose of the game, how the player moves. These are the enemies, you should avoid them. And then that goes back to the home screen. And then you have like the basic level and it's just gonna take, sometimes I forget my way through here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I always cheat and keep the scene view up on the left hand side so that I can that that would be a convenient method wouldn't it so okay there we go got it and then next takes you to the next level and I'm not gonna force my way through this one because I don't know this one I just made it and I couldn't tell you where the end is so anyway and so you you wrestled your way through Xcode on your ailing computer. I did. And it works on your phone and you can swipe and do all of that stuff? Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, and, and, it's and, pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, I'm, so, um, but you don't want to show us the phone, right? Um, I I can I can pull it up on. Um, You'll have to turn your camera on and hold your phone. In yeah. Front. So oddly enough, the canvas looks way different on here. Of course. Because you know you update Xcode and they decide that things are different now, and so that means that the little health bar is all the way down there too. Yeah. But yeah. It it works. In in the editor, there's a setting. There's a setting for aspect ratio, and you yeah. can figure out whatever your phone aspect ratio is, and set the editor to have that same aspect ratio. Then you can wrestle your way through getting the UI elements where you want them to be when they appear on the phone. That that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Show us. Right. Show us it swiping. So, That's all I want to see. <laughs> so it's kind of just the same deal here where you just kind of hold it down and then there's haptics here because you're close to that guy and then it gets a little more intense when you actually encounter him and you take damage but yeah very cool very cool <laughs> i love it okay Is it, that's a that i i know you've been wrestling with like horrendous issues with this thing but uh congratulations yeah. you got it working Thank you. Xcode's a lot of fun. I think everyone should build on Xcode. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that, but um, okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Roshan and her, tele her phone? God, Alexander Graham Bell must be spinning in his grave, huh? Because all he wanted to do was be able to call his brother in Ohio and look what we can do. All right, uh, Mr. Story, you're up. Unless there are comments, questions, suggestions, I don't want to rush things. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Where are you? Elijah, you're up. Having lost three hours of work. Oh, this is on this is on a, a work project, not this project. I would have. Oh, okay. That would have been really sad. Yeah. All right. So we'll just run you through the game. I don't remember if I had this continue from checkpoints last yeah, time. Yeah, you did. Okay. Cool. Just play it. You don't have to explain things. Just play Excellent. it. Excellent. So I may I may work with uh, the lighting a little bit, just because it feels a little dark, but I kind of like it because it makes the torches feel more useful um yeah so we'll just go through it's gonna take a while but i really want to add plants everywhere so the levels are more uh so immersive. Yeah, let me ask a question how how do you recognize the surfaces on which you can portal yeah that's another thing right now you just gotta have to guess oh, okay <laughs> as a player i know which ones like i know that isn't I don't know this isn't, but I know the floor is. I haven't decided. I think I'm going to go with some sort of plant that's only seen on those. Because it's like I can't 
like there's some suggestions about making the rocks different colors but it's like for this particular level it's like i can't make the grass blue or like i mean i guess i could but i don't know i think it would be it would be better if they're just like mushrooms all on the ground because there could be mushrooms on the side of a wall too but i haven't really fixed that yet so spoiler <laughs> alert i'm going to basically show you how to you know do all these but yeah, that was a fun one. Um, I, at the moment, I don't have, you'll see the, when the levels just kind of drop off, I don't have a level that really utilizes the rewind. I mean, it's still there, right? So I can rewind things, but um, I don't have a level that utilizes it. I have an idea for one. I just haven't had time to implement it yet. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is the level that crashed the game uh, last time. So I realized that my original particle system, each particle was emitting light. So each particle doing its own active light really was not a smart idea. Yeah. So I, got, I got rid of that and it worked. So this one is just kind of getting the player more used to uh, portaling around. Um, the, there's, uh oh, we crashed. Um, Let's see. There's that's still the uh, one second. I'm still having a problem where the uh, the portal itself it it goes into some weird infinite loop where the it isn't able to find. I don't really know. It, it basically moves the camera that displays the uh, the portal images. It basically goes into an infinite loop where it's like, oh, I don't, I don't exist. Anyways, it moves outside the world. I didn't explain that well at all. That's fine. It's okay. I don't remember where the rock is, but there's three buttons scattered around, so they have to find the buttons to open this door, which you wouldn't know is a door until you open it. Um, so we'll just huck that down there. All through. Oh, I got so, oh, I got turned around. It's on the other side. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember my own map. Well, it's, it's a complicated map. Apparently. Wedge through here. Uh, you got to find these buttons. Yeah, you have to find the buttons. There's three buttons for this particular door. The next level is more annoying. <laughs> the next level is more annoying. Yeah. Uh, so this one's hard to see, but I hit a rock up here. And the cool thing is you can actually like shoot the dart. You can use the darts to shoot the rock down. Not sure if that's something that somebody playing the game will know, but you can also, I made sure you can climb up the little statue lady and um oh score um this is a maze this one is confusing Sh launch the portal there we go <laughs> goodness i don't really I, I actually played it really quickly before class and i completely forgot like where to go in this i really like like you can see yourself through the portal it's really it's really cool to like mess around with but anyways this one's more of getting the player used to oh you have to take the rock with you into the yeah because the button we need it you, later to yeah because they have to find the button I'm not really nice to the player in this in this level. Go. There we go. Get the This is so hard, Elijah. I mean No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just like Well, you know, I, 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 no, but I mean, given the finite amount of time that we have to do for these classes, Oh, okay. I, I'm really accustomed to these kind of, you know, 
15 minute playthroughs that okay. that one gets with and this is way over the top of of what i usually get for a playable game in a one semester course this is this is uh, uh, this is publishable you know i mean right you've you've made a a, a really compelling game with a lot of hard puzzles and a lot of different mechanics that has to be worked out and sure there are bugs but you know it's it's really cool yeah so any, was, any that was the end any comments questions suggestions for I have a quick suggestion. I might, I would say maybe change the color of the buttons because it looked like maybe it was just because through Zoom the lighting was harder to see, but it made it hard to see the uh, the buttons' colors. But overall, it looked really. You mean fun. these like guys? It, yeah, this okay. is still a game I would definitely play though. That makes sense. Green may not have been the best choice there. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, it is really dark. So uh, you know, in in addition to the WebGL publisher, which, you know, you can publish these games and we can then play them each other. It'd be nice if, uh, you know, people who wanted a copy could request from Elijah a copy for not not a copy of the game folder, because that's your stuff. But, you know, if you would compile a Windows version for somebody who wanted Windows, yeah. I, I don't know. I did actually do the uh, the like the build stuff because at one point I was messing with the lighting and it 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 works pretty good on there. I haven't I haven't played it extensively on that one, but it hasn't crashed on me yet, so that's a good sign. Yeah, but that, you know, uh, send send email to Elijah saying I want a copy and tell him your operating system and he'll provide you send with, your, with send a working your version because this is definitely the 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 standout game of the class. No offense to anyone else. Uh, everyone else has done great work, but this is really great work. So, way to Thank go, you. Elijah! I think you'll get at least a B plus in this class. Oh, thank goodness! Because all the other classes right now not going too hot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's my, all my fault too, right? Because I dangled a, an attractive fruit in front of you, and you've spent all your I'm, time I'm fiddling hard. with video games. Uh, make some money too uh yeah i it, it it's a it's a really good indie game okay finally our pride of place forest you're up all right um so i didn't do a ton since the last time i showed a demo i uh spent most of my time working on relay and then i added a, a health mechanic to the boss so relay is like unity's um method of like peer-to-peer -peer connections over the internet i guess with the unity netcode you basically um, set up a connection on the relay server and then it just handles it and all you have to manage is the join code um so first thing i'm going to start up a host um i don't have it currently set up to start as a server uh just because of the tutorial is following did as host but now you can see i have this join code up here so if i go on to my other um i can join TMKBGQ, okay. Yeah. yeah, and so that's randomly generated every time I start um, a host. And I think that it's generated by Unity, like by the relay server. Okay. Um, and so now I'm playing as this is the client. Um, I can go over, I can fight my guys. All of this part still works. Um, you can delete guys. The only thing that doesn't work, uh, there's currently a bug with my boss where um, you can still damage them and hit them, but uh, it won't register on the client, but it will, oh, well, I got hit. Uh, it will register on the server when the server sees it. So like, it just looks like I'm whacking him around, but the server will recognize the hits. Um, oh, and then that's another thing. He's now like skewed. Um, and so he's not walking straight. He's like walking at an angle. So those are a couple of bugs that I need to fix. But I'm really excited that I got relay working. I feel like that was like a big hurdle I had to leap over. Um, so you've actually yeah. tried this with uh, with other players on other computers? 
I have not. I actually just managed to get it to work this morning at about 10.50 a.m. So, um, but no, that's what I'm going to test out uh, tonight and, you know, the rest of this week. Um, and hopefully I'd actually like to get it. It looks like it might work with uh, WebGL. And so I'd be able to host it on Unity's website and then be able to connect remotely through that, uh, which would be awesome. That so would... That's what I'm going to be trying to do before the projects actually do. Okay, very cool. Any comments, questions, suggestions? And uh, this, this, this is uh, like everyone's done something hard, but I think this is the hardest thing to do because a it's a new system. There's very little documentation, and network games are really hard to begin with, and uh, and the. <laughs> And, and you have to compile it every time you want to test a, a new feature. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's the, the work stream is, is exceedingly difficult. So thank you. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? I, uh, so it looks like you had, I'm guessing that's a bull, the brown character what, explode. What happened to, I may have missed it, but was there still the yellow character uh yeah so there's actually three enemies now there's the regular bull enemy and the regular pufferfish enemy and then the boss is like a combo of the two it does like a dash and oh then so that's explodes. what we must have just saw just there yeah okay. yeah and the boss also has a big health bar he takes 10 hits and has like an invulnerability window um and like i mean obviously there's a bunch of features i would love to add if i got a chance now that i have like the multiplayer down like uh character progression and increased damage on weapons and more enemies and respawning enemies um but mostly I was just trying to get, you know, everything working over the network. Very cool. Meh, <laughs> money's overrated. Free loader, you know, love the pufferfish. Okay, so let me share a screen here. 